welcome to our program, Reflecting on Jesus. This is the second installment in a seven-part series devotionals that are entitled The Seven Portraits of Jesus. We are following the portraits that we find or the way Jesus is portrayed in the letters to the churches in Asia Minor that were written by John in the first century. And the second letter was addressed to the church in Smyrna or Smyrna. And this is Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse number 8 through number 11. Verse 8 says, To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not. They are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. The portrait that I, fi I find of Jesus in this letter is that of an exemplar. Someone who is a role model or who gives an example. Someone worth imitating. Someone with an example that is worth imitating. Now, this, the believers in uh, Smyrna were not having it easy at all. They were really caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, there was a large population of Jews in their city, and these Jews didn't accept Christianity because they thought this was, uh, these were people that were distorting the tradition of Judaism. And so they didn't accept. Maybe the epitome of that is the Apostle Paul during the time when before he was converted, when he used to persecute Christians. Now, Paul repented I mean, and accepted Jesus Christ as his, as his Lord and Savior, but many other Jews didn't. And so they continued with their hostilities against Christianity. And the Christians that were in Smyrna, because of the large Jewish population in that city, were affected severely by that um, religious intolerance. On the other hand, there were traditionalists or people that believed in the traditional religion of the Roman Empire, that is the cult of emperor worship. And these people wanted everyone, with the exception of the Jews, to pay homage by burning incense to the statues of the Caesars in public squares. And the Christians would not do that. So they would not join with the Jews, neither would they join the popular uh, imperial cult. And so they were faced hostilities from both sides. And those hostilities came with loss of properties, loss of status, and loss of just about everything that made life worthwhile in their time. And some of them actually lost their lives. They paid the ultimate price for their convictions and for their belief in Jesus Christ as the only Lord and Savior, the only name under heaven to which we may call. It is in this situation, when they were having a difficult situation, that Jesus specifically addresses their situation. Many times, we also get into situations like those when we have so many questions and answers are few, when we wonder why we have to go through what we sometimes find ourselves in, when the going is so rough and the road is so tough, in those kind of situations, we begin to wonder and to ask whether Jesus cares, where God is, where is God. Sometimes it is in situations of horrific accidents and sometimes natural disasters of unimaginable proportions. At other times, it is debilitating sicknesses that are eating away a loved one's life, or maybe even loss of a loved one in tragic uh, circumstances. Whatever the situation, 
whether it is some event that is reported in the news or something that is so close uh, to home and or maybe even personal, whatever the circumstances, many are times when we find ourselves in situations like those when we begin to wonder and to ask whether God still cares, whether God is still in control, where is Jesus when it hurts so bad? This was the question that was uh, at the forefront of their thinking. I mean, the Christians in Smyrna, they were wondering where Jesus was. And Jesus speaks to them in this letter. He says to them, I know what you're going through. I know what you're going through. This is not a pastor or an elder or just a friend. This is Jesus himself. He addresses them specifically and he says, I know everything that you're going through. My dear brother, my sister, isn't it comforting to know that sometimes, even though there may be no solution, but when someone like Jesus, when, and when that someone is Jesus, says, I know what you're going through. I understand the depth of your pain or the depth of your loss. Um, how you feel about the loss you have incurred. When he says, I know and I understand, and he's not pretending, he really knows. And he says, I even know the depth of your poverty. They were not poor because they were lazy. They were not poor because there were no opportunities. They were poor because they lost their status. They, 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 they were made to lose their status. And without status in society, they could not do anything. Subsequently, they became so poor. But Jesus says, even though you are so poor in material terms, yet in spiritual terms, you are so rich. You are so rich. So sometimes these difficult times may actually work out something positive in our spiritual uh, lives and experiences. And Jesus apparently doesn't say, well, I know what you've gone through. Things are about to get better. Apparently, Jesus says, brace for the worst. Things are about, are about to get even worse, a lot worse. So he says to them, things will get a lot worse before they get better. And he says that the devil is about to put some of you into prison. They were about to be imprisoned now. And I like that aspect, not the aspect that they were going to be imprisoned, but what Jesus says when he says that the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Now, behind the veil of everyday occurrences, Jesus pulls the curtain back and he shows them something that is taking place in the spiritual world. These are not just happenstances. These are not just circumstances that are just happening randomly. There is a well-orchestrated spiritual war or a spiritual offensive against these Christians so that they may renounce the name of Jesus. But Jesus says, hold on to your faith. In fact, history tells us that one of their be uh, believers, in fact, a leader among them called Polycarp, would not renounce. He says, 85 years I've served Jesus, and he has, he has never done me any bad, any bad thing. Why should I renounce him now? And he said, I cannot renounce my Jesus. Polycarp is an example. Even though he was already at the stake, and was about, the firewood was about to be lit, yet Polycarp held on to the name of Jesus right up to the end. Isn't he a sterling example? When we're going through difficult times, when the going is so tough and so rough, when questions abound and answers are few, and maybe you cry late at night, just when everyone else may be sleeping soundly, they are, it's hurting so deeply because of a loss you have incurred, a situation that you're going through. It is in those times that Jesus speaks to your situation, that Jesus speaks to me and he says, I know what you're going through and how it hurts. But Jesus says, hold on. It may even get worse, but hold on. At one time, Jesus was speaking to uh, his disciples and he said to them in John chapter 16 verse 33 he told them that there were some rough days coming ahead uh, but he told them not to despair he said in verse 33 John 16 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world Jesus doesn't promise that life 
the Christian life is going to be an easy uh, or a walk in the park. He says that you will have difficult experiences, but take heart because I have overcome the world. This is where Jesus becomes our exemplar. This is where he becomes a model for us. It's not just a mere talk. He has walked the walk and he's saying, walk in my footsteps. I know where all the thorns are. I have stepped on them myself. But to walk in my footsteps, in the strength and power that I'll give you, you will be able to make it. And so Jesus says to the church in Smyrna, to these believers, I know how difficult it is, but hold on. You will be able to make it with the power that I will supply. The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit will sustain you until you come to the end. And he says something else that is, I think, very encouraging. He says, you will be persecuted or you will suffer for 10 days. 10 days. What does that mean? How, how is that encouraging? It is encouraging in the sense that there is a limit to the misery or to the suffering that they were going to experience. It was not going to be forever. It was not going to be endless. Sometimes when you're going through a difficult situation, it seems like it's forever. But Jesus says, no matter what you go through in this life, it will come to an end. But by the time it comes to an end, may you have, have held on to your faith. May you have been uh, faithful, just like Paul says elsewhere in 2 Timothy chapter 4, when he says to young Timothy, I have kept the faith and I have been faithful up to the very end. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes it is not easy. But the comfort comes in knowing that Jesus knows exactly what it is that we are going through. And he also said to his disciples, in the same breath with which he gave them the gospel commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, in the following verse, chapter 20, uh, in verse 20, Matthew 28, verse 20, he says, behold, I will be with you until the very end of the age. So no matter what you we'll go through, Jesus says, I am with you until the very end, whether in sickness, in bereavement, in um, financial misfortunes, whatever heartbreaks or setbacks, you may have missteps and false steps, whatever difficulties and frustrations, walking through your valley of the shadow of death, Jesus says, I'm going to be with you. And so, may God help us so that like David, we can say, the Lord is truly my shepherd. I will fear no evil. We will walk through, even though it is difficult, until we come to the very end. I remember a song that says, tempted and tried. We are often made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long, while there are others living about us who are never molested, even though they are in the wrong. But it says, further along, we will know all about it. Further along, we will understand why. There are many questions we will never be able to answer this side of the sun. But my brother, my dear sister, may you take courage. And may God bless you. Let us close our eyes in a moment of prayer. Our kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message that you sent to the believers who were in Smyrna. And we thank you for the example that you gave. You told them that once you had died, but you had been brought back to life. And as such, even if they were going to lose their lives, you were going to give them back to them again. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you may also help us to be faithful in difficult circumstances. Some of us right now are going through difficult, excruciating pain and maybe uh, sorrowful situations and bereavement. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you may be the Lord at hand to comfort and to guide. In your name we pray, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>